My battle with acne from endometriosis, PCOS, and Ellis Danlos syndrome hasn't been easy, but it has been a fairly successful one. I've managed to find ways around it and tame it. Before we move ahead, please remember that I am sharing my experiences with acne. I am not a medical professional, so please seek a medical professional for your case. Now, I see there's one question that many ask on endometriosis forums, and that is, can endometriosis give you acne? In my experience of having had severe acne and discussing this with my gynecologist, yes, it can. Endometriosis and even PCOS, I have both, are linked with hormonal imbalances, which play a large role with acne. Also, aside from hormonal issues, when you hit puberty, the body produces excess oil. So it's very easy for oil, dirt, bacteria to get clogged up in the holes of our skin, also known as pores. When these pores are troubled like this, many of us get acne, whiteheads and blackheads. So here's my story, my battle with endometriosis and acne. As an 11 year old, just starting off with my periods and only a couple of years away from turning into a teenager and the odd pimple or acne being expected, I didn't know how bad it could get. I was already dealing with the pains of endometriosis that I didn't think life could get any worse. I soon didn't just have acne on my face, I had it on my arms and my upper back. The acne was big and painful. Wearing my school shirt with a sweater and a blazer on top every morning was so painful. Leaning against the backrest of the bus and the classroom chair was so uncomfortable. My gynecologist in London explained to me that endometriosis is, is a medical issue that can cause a hormonal imbalance and it didn't help that I had PCOS and very sensitive skin. For me, my acne because of endometriosis affected my mental state. I was wrapped up in a mental muddle. The next six years, I found myself reading books on skin and Googling away about anything I found on acne. One tip was to keep the skin clean. And this almost drove me to silly levels of OCD. For example, I would have a dedicated face towel which no one was allowed to touch. Even the smallest fragment of anything foreign and possibly anything dirty touching my face would mean I would thoroughly wash my hands, my arms, all the way to my elbows, like crazily, and then my face. I soon realized I was mentally going to lose it. I fought the urge and stopped. And luckily I did. It's not easy to stop an OCD like that. But when I look back, I can understand the strong desire to be freed from the painful acne. I read up on the importance of staying away from sugars and oily food. But as a 13 year old, it was a tad tough to have a lot of control on what I could and could not eat. Plus, I was afraid of sounding mad and obsessed. Other than my mother, no one knew of how painful the acne was on my back. She's one to live by age-old natural remedies and would open up her beauty book to help me out. There was a time when a friend started a six-week course of antibiotics for her facial acne, I told my mom about it. We went to the gynecologist, no, we went to the GP and requested a prescription for it. I did the six weeks course and thankfully my acne reduced, but the issue never went away from my back or arms. I mean, how would it if the endometriosis wasn't being addressed, the hormonal imbalance needed to be addressed? But strangely, my gynecologist and neither did my GP feel the need to do it. I felt unhelped. I was low in confidence when it came to my appearance, especially with what I could and could not wear. Psychologically, I was beginning to feel quite messed up. I felt there was no end 
to this ordeal. My endometriosis was painful. I could hardly stand because of the pain during my period week. My legs were beginning to cause trouble. So years later, we've discovered I have Ellis Danlos syndrome, which causes slow healing and skin sensitivity. I was also getting more and more injury prone. But yet in all this, I worked hard, did well in school. At age 16, I got a weekend job at Accessorize and I kept going. Yet, Feeling confident with my appearance was a long work in progress. What did help was that I was excelling academically. It was something I believed I had some control over, so I used that confidence to get me through. Eventually, I tamed my endometriosis-induced acne. But how? All those years of applying my mom's home remedies, being more accepting of what I look like, what I endured because of endometriosis and the confidence of knowing that despite not feeling confident, I was confident of being able to hold my own in a conversation, to also be open to educating myself of my condition, all helped me. None of this was simple. From the age of 11 to 19, the constant mental and physical battle was huge. I started to appreciate and admire those who were themselves, those who had a personality rather than just being pretty faces. I decided that I needed to just be me. This shift in thought happened gradually and I'm immensely grateful that it happened. Now for the home remedies I applied, these mainly consisted of sandalwood powder, fuller's earth and a few other components and interesting ingredients. So what I'm going to do is create a video in which I explain and show in detail my DIY skincare remedies for acne. I'll begin with the first remedy that I use religiously for all these school years. So watch out for the next video. Now, if you wish to share your endometriosis and acne journey, then please leave a comment below. If you feel my story can help someone, then please do share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. Bye-bye.